So this video gives you everything you need to make Kaida, the dragon millipede, which is this absolutely stunning skein of um, the kind of deep beetroot colour alongside a gorgeous pink and what is a very, very unusual shape in terms of my patterns. And it's based on a dragon millipede and you can look these up. They really are um, these two colours. And it's the first time that I've used a totally different structure where you're crocheting all the segments as you go along. So the first thing to really mention is the fact that it's very important that when you make this first section that is the head, so when you first start the pattern, stuff and put your, your um, safety eyes in before you continue to crochet the rest. It is possible to stuff it at the end, but it really is a fiddle, believe me, because um, I've done it myself a few times. Um, take my word for it. Stuff it and put your safety eyes in before you continue onwards to do the rest. And I'm just going to show you there where my stitch marker is. It's not important once you've got those safety eyes in, but I thought I'd show you when you're looking at the shape of your head like that with a nose your safety eyes are going to be going just alongside your stitch marker there so I'm going to remove that now the rest of the body remains unstuffed so I'm just going to take my couple of stitch markers out because obviously it is a very long piece um, remains unstuffed because what we're actually going to do is fold them all up on themselves in order to create a lovely um, movement in that millipede so you need to take them like this and you fold them all inwards on themselves and then what we're going to do after is we're going to actually crochet the legs and the spikes and that's what holds them together so we will be putting stuff a little bit of stuffing into the end one eventually but fold them all in on themselves first so you can see them like that so that's how our millipede's going to look. And it's actually then segmented. So it's got lovely movement in it as a structure. They're not as long um, as they're actually quite a short piece. But what I wanted to represent is the fact that they've got that lovely movement in that segmented body. So then you need to stuff this end piece. And I've actually pulled mine back a little bit there because um, I actually had to stuff the head at the end on this one um, for the video. So that's why I pulled mine back a little bit. Um, you'll have decreased down, but do get that little bit of stuffing in your end piece before you do those final decreases down to a point. So stuff that last segment and then gather those stitches together. But it should end on a bit of a point there because you've got that round on nine before you do your last decreasing down to six. And then that stuff segment. So you've got a stuffed head at the beginning and you've got a stuff segment at the end. And that fits neatly inside that last segment like that. So the head goes forward and they fold backwards in on themselves. Right, now it's time to join it together by putting your legs in. So once you've done it like that, you can clearly see where your head is. Fold it up first and then turn it over because we're going to work our legs underneath. So what we're going to do is work two shorter legs onto the top one and the bottom one, and then all the other legs in between are the same length. Now, what I want is to create a leg that has its right side curling inwards like that, which means that as a right-handed crocheter, I'm gonna set off from this side and go all the way down in one piece, and then I'll set off from, break my yarn, and then I'll come back up the other side. Right, so let's slip stitch into position. So this is on my first segment, that's my stuffed head. This is on my first segment here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I work back down that chain. And then when you've worked the last treble, you move across three rounds. So do you see how I've, I've slip stitched in there? Originally, I'm going to miss three rounds out and then I'm going to slip stitch in there like that. So that's our first small leg into position. Then we are going to chain two stitches. So one, two, and then we're going to slip stitch into the next segment. So it'll actually be the leg on that segment that will hold it together. So you come across here, slip stitch in like that. So you've got your two chains in between. And then we're on to doing a long leg. So then follow your pattern to work your long leg. And then do exactly the same as we did on the shorter leg. So you finish off the last treble into that chain. Then slip stitch down onto this segment, 
three rounds over from where you were. Then you chain two again, one, two, and then we're going to pick up on the next segment and do exactly the same thing. And so you work all the way down one side like that in a straight line, putting one line of legs in. So continue doing that all the way down a segment and then we're going to work a small one onto our last segment. Then we'll rejoin and do the same on the other side and that will be our legs complete. So once you've got your two lines of legs in on the bottom, it's now time to do the round almost of spikes that goes onto the back. And this is what's going to um, attach the top of the segments together. So you've attached the bottom of the segments together with those legs. It's like a nice springy accordion at the stage. We're going to put a slightly tighter round of um, similar spikes across the top of the back and that will hold that structure together again just slightly more tightly because you're doing only chain ones in between rather than chain twos but this time rather than doing it one line and one line we're actually going to curve right right the way round the bottom and then back up the other side in one go so as a right-handed person i'm going to start on this shoulder so the left hand as I look at it, shoulder of the millipede. And that's because I want the spikes to be right side upwards so that they curve upwards. As a left-handed person, you'd just start on the other side. So slip stitch into position like that. And do exactly the same as we have been doing on the legs, just it's a slightly smaller. So one, three, four. So we come across, we slip stitch in, we chain one, and then we're going across and we're going into the next one. So you're using a very similar technique to the one that you used before. You just, this time, what's different is the fact that you're not going to break that yarn at the end. You're going to turn and do some on the tail and come right the way back up the other side. So go all the way down that side using that same technique. Then when you come to the bottom, we've got to fit five onto the bottom. So I've done my first one. Then you're going to work your second one and starting to turn the corner. So I've done that first one quite straight in the same way that I've done all the others so far. So on this one, rather than go in line with it, which would be there, I'm going to come in slightly on a diagonal to around there. So that's the second one. Then I'm going to do the third one straight across the round. So one, two, three, four. and slip stitch in. So that's that straight one that's gone in. And then we're going to turn the millipede right the way around and then do two more, starting to come back up the other way. And the only tip really to get this really neat, because it is obviously a really new technique, um, it's not something that I've ever done before at all, is look at your distance between your spikes and your legs here. And when you turn this corner, just make sure that you're gonna get that distance about the same on the other side. So one, three, four, So I'm aiming for about, you could even count the stitches if you wanted to, aiming for around there. So that's my one, two, my flat one, my one that's coming back up. And then this is going to be my straight one. As I start to turn back up in the direction of going up the other side. Back onto there. So do you see I've got one, two, three, four, five. Then I chain my one. And the way to get this the neatest is, again, as I've said, look at that distance between the legs and the spikes on that side. Make sure you're matching it on that side. And then you can also line it up with your legs. So you're going to slip stitch into where the, the round that's in line with your leg there. So like that. and carry on in exactly the same way that you did on the other side, back up. So once you've completed that, you've now got your millipede held together by that gorgeous structure. You've got the spikes going upwards, your legs going downwards, put your ends in, and then your final touches are to put your two antennae into place. So use exactly the same techniques that we use for the legs. You're just going to slip stitch here on one side and then slip stitch it in coming forwards. And then the same again, go from the forwards backwards because that'll turn them both inside with the right side inside upon themselves so they both curve round.